I'm joined today by Dr. Bernd van Linde, Chief Executive Officer of Commercial Bank of Dubai. He's been with the bank, uh, was named as CEO in November of 2016, joined the bank at the beginning of 2017 after several years as the Chief Executive Officer of a bank in Saudi Arabia. So perhaps the, the, the obvious way to start is you now have your feet under the desk here in the UAE. What are your views on the UAE system, the banking system here, and perhaps how it, it's different from the system that you were working in previously? Um, thank you, Robin. Uh, nice to be here with you today. Um, you're right, been in the country now for uh, about eight months or so. Uh, my impression of the banking system and the health of the banking system is actually quite good. Um, it's clear that the whole region, whether it's Saudi Arabia or the UAE, has had its challenges with the low oil price. But I think governments typically have taken the right measures. They've, they've, their measures have been very supportive for growth of the economy. I also think the fact that OPEC was able through its measures to stabilize the oil price, sort of put, put a floor in it at least, has helped to create some confidence. So I think the economy is, is, is in quite good health. Um, the banking system in particular, I must say that there's lots of, of similarities between the two countries. Banks are typically very well capitalized. If you compare them on a, on a global scale, banks have very strong capital positions. They have strong liquidity positions as well. Um, both in, in, again, the same for both countries. Coverage of non-performing loans is, is very good. So if you sort of add that all up together, then the banking system is actually in, in good shape today. With the banking system in good shape, though, and you, you, you mentioned high levels of capital, high levels of liquidity, is that always necessarily uh, an indication of a good banking system? Because banks make money by lending money. Banks make, don't make money by not lending money. So where are banks doing their business at the moment? What are the trends that you see in, in the UAE economy? Yeah, but I think, first of all, you have to be in good health in order to lend money, right? It's, it's as simple as that. If you don't have enough capital, if you don't have enough liquidity, then there, there will be no lending of money. So that, that's, that's sort of the starting point uh, for everything. Um, GDP growth in the UAE is, is good. GDP growth in Dubai is even a little bit above that for the UAE as a whole. Uh, credit growth in the country is in line or a little bit above uh, GDP growth. Uh, opportunities are uh, present on both sides, whether it's corporate banking or retail banking, there's plenty of opportunities for growth. So where do you, the institution you're now with, Commercial Bank of Dubai, where, where does CBD sit in terms of its competitive position within that marketplace? I think when you look at Commercial Bank of Dubai, we've been in the country now for about 50 years. 2019 we'll see our, our 50th anniversary and throughout that time we are uh, seen uh, or known as a bank by and for the, the family owned and managed businesses in the UAE. Not just in Dubai but across the UAE. Um, we are a, a bank that is proud of its relationship management. We stand by our clients throughout economic cycles. We are, we are truly a relationship uh, bank. Um, traditionally strong franchise in corporate and commercial, but increasingly using that strength to expand in retail banking as well. Uh, if I would have to say one word in which, in which we really distinguish ourselves from the other banks, then it's, it's truly customer service. We are an accessible bank. We are there to provide flawless, smart service to our clients. That service or the requirement for it is changing though, because people are moving, not just people as individuals but people with their companies as well are moving away from traditional banking to online services whether it's a, a web-based service or a phone-based service in fact even more and more on on mobile devices yeah. than computers even yeah. what's the future for the bank branch uh, i think you're absolutely right whether it's it's retail banking clients personal banking clients or corporates people are focused on digital services. Uh, on the retail side, uh, it's, it's primarily mobile these days. On the corporate side, it's a combination of internet banking, mobile, things like cash deposit machines. Still, I'm convinced there will always be a role for a branch. It will be a different role than branches traditionally play, but there will always be a role. Um, when it comes to service, when it comes to the, 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 the resolution of issues, uh, when you need human interaction, you need a branch to go to. Uh, there are You're saying the customers need to have somewhere where they can go and shout at someone. <laughs> yeah, and, and, and preferably after that get their issues solved as well. It's, uh, there are certain transactions, large ca uh, when you have to handle large amounts of cash, there may be thresholds that you cannot use machines, you will, will want to go to a branch. Complex advisory on uh, 
things like wealth management, but also perhaps on mortgages, right? For many people, uh, the, the buying a house is, is a once or twice in a lifetime decision. So for, for those kind of transactions, those kind of events, you still want to be able to go to a branch and get advice from, from the, the, the capable staff present in the branch. Well, we've been talking a little bit, and we'll come back to this issue of technology, but in terms of the areas of banking, whether it's individual, whether retail or corporate or small business or whatever, where, where, where are the growth areas? What, what do you see as the, the, the bigger opportunities? I think in every market there's growth in every segment, to be honest. And it, it's uh, Dubai and the UAE, it's quite a diversified economy. It's an, it's an economy that offers growth across the segments. There's growth on the, on the corporate side, there's growth as a result from the government investments in, in projects. We have some, some very exciting things to come in Dubai, the Expo 2020, the development of the whole Dubai South area. This will be wonderful opportunities. There's the development of further real estate uh, uh, projects and simply the, the growth that comes with the GDP growth and the population growth. So whether it's retail, small businesses, mid-sized businesses, large corporates, I, I'm very confident that there will be growth in every segment. All right, well, let's, let's, let's come back to, to um, the technology for a moment. How is, you, you say there's always going to be a place for a branch, but how is the business of banking itself uh, in, in broader terms going to change? Not just the customer facing side, but what happens in the back offices mm -hmm. and what happens in the capital markets? How, is, how do you see banking in, evolving? Yeah, that, I think it's a very good question because the most visible aspect of the new technology is on the front end. It's, it's the app, but actually the biggest impact is made on the back end. If you're able to digitize your processes, if you're able to make them paperless straight through, it has a massive impact on the efficiency of the bank, on the profitability of the bank, but first and foremost on the level of service that you're able to provide. If you can provide a, a service to your customer that is straight through, that is real time, that is error free, that, that's what customers are, are, are expecting. Um, so I think the impact of technology will primarily be less visible perhaps, but will primarily be on the back office of the bank. Now we have a rapidly, you, you've touched on this yourself, we have a rapidly evolving economy mm. in Dubai, both diversifying, uh, not just Dubai, the UAE as a whole, both diversifying away from oil and also growing rapidly overall in terms of population, in terms of GDP. How would you assess the contribution of CBD to this? The, the logical answer to give would be that we are a bank, we're involved in financing projects that contribute to the growth of the economy. Whether it's, it's airports, roads, hospitals, schools, we're very active across the UAE in financing all of these projects. So that, that's definitely a contribution that CBD and, and other banks in the UAE are, are given to the, uh, to the economy and the development of the economy. Um, but, but I think there's more than that. Uh, if you look at CBD, we're very proud of recruiting and developing Emirati talent. We have our own graduate recruitment program to MU. We hire fresh graduates, we train them, we develop them throughout the bank. And sure, not all of them will stay with CBD for all of their career, but even then, if they leave us to go to the government or to other banks or companies in the private sector, it's still a contribution to the economy because we we've, we've are the ones that, that gave them these highly skilled, well-trained uh, uh, staff. Uh, and that's something that's very important to us. Um, on top of that, we have our corporate social responsibility programs, whether it's in, in charity or sponsorship of important events. I think as, as a bank, it's a combination of things. It's the direct contribution to financing the growth of the economy, it's helping developing the human talent, and it's the, the corporate social responsibility initiatives. Now, you, 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 you mentioned right at the beginning that your key differentiator as far as you're concerned is customer service. How can we quantify how customer experience actually manages to drive business value and, and profitability? I'm not sure if I can quantify it by giving you one number, but <laughs> I think there is nothing else. In a way, the only driver of sustained value, of sustained profitability is customer service. The, the world has changed fundamentally, in my, in my opinion. Banking has always been about service, much more than about product. I, I, thank you very much. It's a, you, you're one of a small number of bank managers who are uh, CEOs of banks who actually come right out and say, we're a service industry. We are. We are. To me, banking products are, are fungible to a certain extent, but even if they are unique, they're not unique for very long. 
because banking products are typically very easy to copy. So banking, the, the only differentiating in banking is service, is customer service, customer experience. And I think that that has been emphasized even more um, with, with the advent of, of companies like, like Amazon and Netflix, because and you can name many more. These guys set a, set a benchmark for customer service that is so high that every other company, including banks, have to meet it, because that's what customers start to expect. They start to expect real-time responses, real-time recommendations, straight through, zero errors. That, that's what you uh, expect from Amazon. That's what you expect from Commercial Bank of Dubai. And this is where it's important that the back office is right as well, oh, yes. not just the app at the front. Oh, yes. It's the, the, in a way, the app is the easy part. But if you have a fantastic app and somebody along the way still is, has to retype whatever happened before, then you will not be able to provide the, the flawless service that customers expect. All right, let's, let's look specifically at Commercial Bank of Dubai itself. Um, the clue's kind of in the name, perhaps, um, and you mentioned it yourself uh, in, in, in one level. Commercial Bank of Dubai, I suppose, is best known for its commercial banking offerings, yeah. particularly in, in treasury and in cash management. For sure. Our, uh, we have a strong franchise in corporate and commercial banking. And in, in that sense, we have the best possible name. We are a bank by and for the, the family-owned and managed businesses in the UAE. But I think these days we're much more than that. Well, you have to grow beyond that um, to grow the institution, surely. You have to. You have to. I, not just to grow the institution, but also because I believe it's very hard to be a corporate and commercial bank, to be a good corporate and commercial bank without being a good retail bank as well. Uh, it, in order to be a good corporate and commercial bank, you need a retail bank to provide funding to your corporate and commercial bank, uh, to provide reliable funding at attractive levels. I also think on the asset side, it, it's retail banking, retail assets provide some diversification away from your corporate and commercial business. So if you want to grow in a sustainable way, then you will have to have both. You will have to be a retail bank as well as a corporate and commercial bank. And that's why I think the emphasis that we had in, in, in more recent years on growing the retail bank is exactly the right one. We've talked a bit about customer service, customer experience and, and customer expectations changing. So what is CBD itself actually doing to match those expectations in terms of innovation, in terms of smart services? Uh, one of the things we, we, we put forward is that we want to be default digital. Our proposition, our default proposition is digital. Sure, we will always have wonderful branches with great staff that provide excellent service, but the default proposition is digital. So we, we want to be a digital leader. Um, on the retail side, we came out with CBD Now earlier uh, this year, the first digital-only bank in the UAE, which, which clearly shows our ambition to be a leader in the digital space. Uh, on the corporate side, we have digitized our offerings in cash management, in trade, um, uh, the payroll, and this is really where, where we need to go to. Um, we need to go to we need to go there because our customers demand it, our customers expect it, but we also need to go there because it's ultimately good for us. It will make us an efficient, streamlined bank by providing the services in a, in a digital way. Now, you mentioned the need to, 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 to be the, a good corporate and commercial bank. You also need the retail arm. Can you sort of go into a little bit more detail on, on the reason why that is the case? I mean, is it just because it's a source of funds? Because surely you can raise funds elsewhere. You can raise funds elsewhere. I, I think it, it's an important reason is the source of funds, to be honest. If you look at the global financial crisis, the institutions that were hit hardest were typically the ones that were fully reliant on wholesale funding. And that, that's not a good place to be. It's a great place to be when things are great, but it's not a good place to be when things are not great. Well, it's, it's, a, it's a cheaper place to be when the markets are, are doing nicely, because retail funding is expensive. Dealing with individual customers can be expensive, can it not? It can, I think it's, it, it may be cheap in the short term, but in the medium to long term, it's a very expensive place to be. Oh. Um, dealing with retail customers has its challenges, but it, it's um, ultimately the right thing to do for a corporate bank. We are a good corporate bank. We have relationships with the staff, with the owners, with the managers of our corporate clients. Uh, they expect us to provide services, the same high quality service that we, we provide to the corporations, to them as individuals. So that's how we entered into retail banking. We've broadened it over the, over the last couple of years and we, we essentially try to bring the same level of service to other clients, to other retail clients. Um, 
it, it is a, a diversified source of funding. It's a diversified source of assets as well, of, of interest income. Um, and it, it's, it's really the, the, the combination of corporate, commercial and retail is what makes Commercial Bank of Dubai a strong bank. Now, as, as Commercial Bank of Dubai, you also have a number of uh, relationships with governmental entities, whether they're Dubai government or whether they're federal government. How important are those linkages for the bank? Uh, extremely important. We are uh, very proud uh, to be the, the uh, exclusive provider of wallet services to, the, uh, to, ma to many of the government entities uh, across the UAE, not just in Dubai, through our uh, public sector payment offering. Extremely proud of that, been doing that for a long time. Uh, both sides are very happy with that relationship. Uh, more recently, we built a relationship with the Federal Authority for Government Human Resources. Um, they have a, a, a program to which they provide benefit to benefits to government employees, uh, IMTI Azad, and we are the exclusive banking partner to that program. So the, these relationships are, uh, to me, are truly win-win. They are important to us, they're important to the government entities as well. Now, you've got a conventional banking operation, which is, is, is the largest component of the business or larger component of the business, but CBD also has uh, an Islamic finance offering. Where do you see the, the most growth or the fastest growth in percentage terms? Uh, over the last couple of years, our Islamic banking business has grown uh, much faster than our conventional business. Um, we have a very strong offering by year-end. It should be, my guess, is probably close to 20% of our business will be uh, Islamic finance-based. And the interesting part is that it's to a very large extent, if not completely, driven by customer demand. Customers demand us to provide a Sharia-compliant banking services. So that's, that's what we do, whether it's on the corporate side, on the commercial side, on the retail side. We essentially make sure that we meet our, our customers' requirements. It, it comes back to customer service in a way, right? <laughs> they expect us to provide Sharia compliant services. That's what we do. And it's clear that the demand for these services has grown faster than on the conventional side. Conventional banking will continue to be very important to us, but I, I expect Islamic banking to, to be the fastest growing of the two. Now, you, you mentioned earlier some of the opportunities that, that, that are coming along with the, the way the economy is growing and, and various uh, projects that, that are in play at the moment. Yes, there are great opportunities. There's great potential. What are the key challenges? What, what, not, not what sends you home with a song in the, heart, in the heart, but what sends you home thinking, what are we going to do about this? What, what, what are the potential pitfalls? Uh, I've heard people say that banking in the coming 10 years will change more than in the previous uh, 100 years. Um, and I think that may be true. I think when you look at banking today, competition is probably fiercer than it has ever been. And I think a country like, uh, like the UAE is a great example. Uh, 53 banks competing for essentially the same banking space. So very strong competition from uh, incumbent banks. Uh, on top of that, new entrants. Uh, whether it's telecom operators, fintechs, digital-only banks, everybody wants to compete in this, uh, in this space. Um, I, think, I don't think competition has ever been as fierce as it is, as it is today. Um, we have regulation coming our way, uh, Basel III, uh, IFRS 9. Uh, this is regulation that will have an impact on the banking system. Uh, I'm very pleased to say that I, I believe the central bank of the UAE is, is going around this in exactly the right way and sort of understands the, the proportionality of it all. Uh, the, the measures that we take should be proportional to the size and complexity of the banks and that's something that works extremely well in my opinion. But a combination of competition, uh, primarily driven by very fast technological developments, increased regulation, it makes for a very challenging environment. <laughs> Well, the, the, which kind of makes the, the question I want to ask slightly irrelevant because the answer is going to be out of date. I don't mean you're going to get it wrong, but I think it's going to be out of date. What does the banking customer want? Yes, they want high levels of service, but what do they want to do? What is it, what is it people want to do and how does the bank go about meeting those needs? I think customer, customers want sort of, of a hassle-free service. Things have to be right first time, have to be done fast, uh, the, the bank has to be responsive. And they have to be done 24-7? They have to be done 24-7 at a, at a uh, location of the customer's choice. 
customers expect to be able to, you can order at Amazon 24-7. Customers expect to be able to deal with their banks 24-7. Whether it's on mobile banking, internet banking, on the ATMs, cash deposit machines, service has to be 24-7. I believe increasingly customers will expect service to be omni-channel as well. You start a transaction at a certain ch uh, channel, you stop it in the middle, you continue it at another channel. That's technologically not easy to do, but it, it is something that, that customers will expect because it works today that way with Amazon, right? Again, as an example. So I, I believe that this sort of any place, any time, anywhere banking combined with, with this omni-channel approach, that's what customers will expect banks to provide. And what, finally, from your perspective, now that you, you, you're, you're getting your feet under the desk at, at Commercial Bank of Dubai and, and you've got a clear idea of the institution and its priorities or what you think its priorities should be, what are the top ones? What, what, what's on your to-do list and what will you be doing first? The success of Commercial Bank of Dubai will be driven by the success of our customers. We have to be relentlessly focused on meeting our customers' expectations or exceeding our customers' expectations. We have to make sure that the whole bank is ready to do that. Because we discussed it before, but meeting customers' expectations requires the bank end-to-end -to, -end to be capable to do that. So probably my top priority will be that the whole infrastructure, whether it's people, technology, processes, front to back, is ready to provide these flawless services that customers expect. Thank you very much. Dr. Bernd van Linde of Commercial Bank of Dubai. Thank you.